The defense rested this afternoon in the case of an Aurora police officer accused of reckless manslaughter in the death of Elijah McLean. Nathan Woodyard was the first officer to stop McLean after a report that he was wearing a mask and acting sketchy. He was unarmed. He was doing nothing wrong. The defense's final witness was a doctor who was highly critical of the paramedics who injected McLean with the sedative ketamine, ultimately blamed for his death. From what you see, how is the ketamine affecting Elijah McLean? I suspect that he's already arrested from a respiratory perspective and probably either arresting or had arrested from a cardiac perspective, meaning his breathing has stopped and his heart has stopped or is stopping. What does that mean his heart has stopped or stopping? Technically, that means you're dead, right? Our investigative reporter Kevin Vaughn and Alex Lewis have been in court day after day for this trial as well as the prior trial of Rodima and Rosenblatt to, to break down where we stand with the defense resting now. So Kevin, let's start with you and the ketamine that was also pointed to in trial number one. That's right. The, the tactic in both of these trials by police officers is to blame the ketamine injection by the paramedics for the death. The prosecution's theory, though, is that this entire event, from the moment Nathan Woodyard put his hands on Elijah McClain until that shot was administered about 18 minutes later, was all one event, and that the police officers were complicit with the paramedics in his death. And talking about complicity, that means that they aided, abetted, or otherwise supported or planned a, cr a, a crime. But Whittier's involvement is really unique to if, you know, you at home were paying attention to the first trial with Rosenblatt and Rodema, they were more hands-on, specifically Rodema, right? Exerting that physical force almost the entire time of this 18-minute altercation. Woodyard is really only hands-on five minutes. How do you think that plays into this? Well, the prosecution's argument is that he applied a carotid hold, right. got his arm around Elijah McClain's neck, cut off the blood to his brain, which made him lose consciousness, at least momentarily. That they also argue that it caused a host of medical problems. He vomited, he inhaled some of that, the acid went up in his body, the oxygen went down, and they put on two experts who testified that those issues alone were life-threatening and that Elijah McLean might have died even without the ketamine, though they did agree that the shot of ketamine is what ultimately killed him. And to see Woodyard himself go on, um, you know, be on, sta on stand, excuse me, yesterday, I think no one was really expecting, but I'm curious how the jury really responded to that because we were talking about it earlier. Some folks were like, he was really laying it on, very tearful and weepy, but that may have pulled on the heartstrings of some, right? Well, you've seen the same thing I've seen. This jury is extremely attentive, lots of detailed note takers, and they were paying very close attention to what he was saying. The question is, how did they react to it? And we won't know that until there's you know, a verdict. Yep, the closing arguments tomorrow morning and then the jury will start deliberations at that point. We don't know how long it will take, uh, but let's talk about the penalty Woodyard is facing for this charge of reckless manslaughter. Uh, he could get, uh, if he's convicted, he could get as little as probation or as much as six years in prison. Um, that's, that's basically the range. So um, first we'll see if there's a conviction and then if so, the judge will have to decide on sentence. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like we've heard so much, even though so far there have been three police officers on trial for the death of Elijah McClain. We have heard so much about the paramedics, so much about this administered ketamine. Um, that's next, right? But like my, my curiosity is with these paramedics, you would think it's almost like a shut and, you know, closed case, but they're going to have to put on a defense. What is that defense going to be? Do we know? We don't know what that's going to be. Interestingly, there was a hearing this morning for the paramedics, a pretrial hearing that I went to before testimony started in, the, in uh, Nathan Woodyard's trial. And the attorneys for the paramedics noted that the police officers have all pointed the finger at them and said that their defense will include, uh, the phrase was casting aspersions on others, whether that's police officers training, you know, paramedics are overseen by, by medical directors, we don't know what that exactly is gonna be. Lots of stuff in all of these trials was filed under seal, so we haven't been able to look at, you know, basic arguments that have been made in the filings in the case at this point. So we will find out November 27th when that trial is scheduled to start. Yeah, the examination of the linkage too, the, the way police and, and uh, EMTs operate and how that was supposed to function, how it did function that day, uh, may be something that is examined more in that third trial. Absolutely, the paramedics face multiple counts each, and um, this last witness that they had today just just blistered them for failing in one moment after another to do the most basic things that they're 
jobs should require them to do, according to this witness. The death of Elijah McClain certainly drawing attention through uh, one trial, another trial that is uh, coming to its conclusion, and one yet to come. Kevin and Alex, thanks for covering it for us. Uh, and we'll continue to talk about it, of course, as, as more happens in this case. Thanks.